If you have ever been thinking about, hey, I don't like the job I'm working, or I don't like what I'm doing now, or I've seen ads for full-time filmmaker and other creators on YouTube kind of living the life that I want to live, I want that and I, I should get it. If you've ever thought any of that, this is the video for you because I'm gonna actually give you not the YouTube version of you can change your life and become a filmmaker. I'm gonna tell you what it's actually like, if it's actually possible, and also why I'm gonna review the full-time filmmaker course by Parker Welbeck and his team. This is a course that I've bought and I'm gonna give you my honest, transparent opinion and tell you if it's worth it to buy, what you can expect once you buy it, and uh, just be open, transparent, and honest with you guys, and give you my journey as a filmmaker in really the last seven months, and how you can go from living a life you don't necessarily wanna live, to something that you truly love what you do every day, and uh, yeah, let's just, let's just get right into it. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of my backstory, because it's really important for this story. So um, back in high school, and I'll start early on, like when I was 13 to maybe like 17, I was a part of that whole like Call of Duty editing community. So I had a ton of experience using Premiere, After Effects, uh, always been interested in Adobe programs, Photoshop, Illustrator. So from a technical standpoint, I sort of had that foundation down pat. Even in high school, um, I would always do courses on yearbook, I would always do broadcasting, video, editing, all that kind of stuff. So I was always sort of a technical kid and knew that was something I really liked to do. Um, but I really had no idea what I wanted to do when I graduated high school. So when I graduated high school, my I was very fortunate. My parents had enough money put away where I could go to university and come out of it without any debt. So that was a huge advantage that I had that not many people do and I completely understand that. Um, but I took something that I thought was safe um, and I went to business school because I figured if I'm gonna do something in my life, you know, my dad ran his own business, it would probably relate to that. And it's a good general degree. Um, you can apply to a lot of different areas. So I did just that. Uh, I went to Lakehead University in Thunder Bay, Ontario and started studying business. And I quickly decided that the best route for me in that program was to do an accounting degree. But I felt like it gave me the most knowledge about a business and really helped me even nowadays uh, helped me run my own small business and gave me a good understanding of how business worked, numbers, and I was always relatively decent at math, so it just kind of seemed like a basic fit for me. At least I felt also that in business school, the marketing and human resources majors and programs were sort of watered down and didn't really give you a good understanding of how to actually do jobs related to that in real life. Um, it was just a lot of read the textbook, memorize the textbook, and then answer it on a test. Whereas accounting, they actually put you in real world situations and made you apply what you've learned. Um, so that was a huge plus for me. And in the summer after my third year of university, I got a job, it's kind of like an internship, at one of the largest accounting firms in Canada. It's called MNP. maybe you've heard of it. And I worked there all summer for five and a half months and really got my feet wet with auditing and tax reconciliation and doing compilations for businesses. And I quickly realized that although I did not mind the work and I really loved the people there, it was a great work environment, I just wanted more. I didn't want to show up to work every day in the sun and see beautiful weather that I couldn't go be in. I really got used to the whole just show up to the office, do your work, put in the hours, then go home and do whatever you want and then come back and do it the next day. I got used to it, but I wasn't super thrilled about it. I knew from that point that at least at M&P, the work that I was doing there wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So um, when that ended that fall, going into my fourth year, I made a change and I went to a job seminar and I got a job working for the Canadian government for the Canada Revenue Agency. So this was all about auditing income tax and it was going to start in May of the following year. So I would graduate, go work at the CRA, and then if I did that job for the rest of my life, 25, 30 years, I would have an amazing pension, and I had that stability, that security, I was set. And I always thought that that's the kind of life I wanted to have. I always wanted to feel and be successful. I felt that if I didn't do a job like a nurse or an accountant or a lawyer or like a traditional job that I would be seen by my peers as a failure or someone who took the easy way out or someone who was never going to make any money. Um, and that was a real fear that I had. 
So I think one of the main reasons why I was so attracted to accounting was because I could see the end goal. It was like, start here, get there, and then you're set. There's not a lot of volatility. The world's always gonna need more accountants. Um, and it was a very secure thing to do. I worked at Best Buy for over four years in total, and I was always super familiar with cameras and tech. And that Christmas, I actually bought a Canon M50, which was returned by a customer. And uh, I got it for a really good deal, super cheap, because I was a staff member there, I had an employee discount. Um, and I started trying to get my feet wet with not only making YouTube videos, but also doing photography jobs, houses, real estate, whatever. Um, and it was always like a hobby that I kind of did on the side. I've had tons of YouTube channels over the years. Some were very successful, some weren't very successful. And that's just always an aspect of my life that I wanted to have. I liked making content. So I started like my own business, I guess, when I was in university and would do small jobs on the side for some people. But it was never something that I fully intended to do seriously. Then, as everybody knows, the pandemic hit. And uh, while we were trying to get the virus under control, the world basically shut down. So I, I graduated my final year from my program with my degree in accounting from this desk. I graduated right here. So I never got any of that uh, whole graduation uh, party stuff that a lot of other kids have had. I was actually sitting right here looking at this screen. I graduated and I was ready to start my job at the Canadian government, but they shut the building down um, due to COVID. And since I wasn't trained, I hadn't even started, I wasn't able to work from home. So I essentially lost my job and I had no idea what I was going to do. I had already left M&P, so I couldn't go back. There were some other accounting firms in town that I guess I could have applied at, but it would have just been the same thing as M&P. And then my job, was now gone. So I had no idea what I wanted to do. And for the first little bit, the CRA said, you know, the job, it's going to happen. We just uh, need a couple months or a month or a couple weeks. So for like three months, the Canadian government put out the Canada emergency response benefit. So I was getting money every month, just waiting to go back to work. And I took some of my savings. I went out and I bought a dirt bike and I was just kind of screwing around with friends, just dirt biking everywhere outside, obviously, because you couldn't go and see anybody and just kind of waiting for the government to tell me the direction of my future. And it always bothered me, but it didn't bother me fully until I finally decided to make a change. So after about three months of that, I realized, okay, I'm relying on the government to give me money every month to live. And I'm also relying on them to tell me when I can go to work to go and like, do, and that's my career. Like I, I have to go to back to work at some point. So I was like, I got tired of just sitting around and waiting for someone else to bail me out of my problems. And this is where my career as a filmmaker sort of really took off. Now I had watched Parker Welbeck's videos in full-time filmmaker for, for years, ever since he really started that course and uh, it was always something I wanted to buy but I was like oh, like a thousand dollars like I don't know is it really worth it um, and I just never really took the plunge but what I did was I and this is sort of a unique story about how I got into filmmaking there's this place in Thunder Bay called the Thunder Bay Botanical Conservatory and what it essentially is is it's like an indoor nature reserve where there's plants from all over the world and it's been here since like 1970 so the city where I live Thunder Bay has notoriously underfunded this place. It's falling apart, the roof falls apart, inside the railings are rusted. It just needs, needs funding in order to be what it was 50 years ago. And the city never allocated any money and it's a huge debate in town because everybody loves this place. What are we going to do with the Botanical Conservatory? And I had heard that they wanted to make some sort of like video or community project to, to try and lobby the city to save it. But obviously as a non-for-profit organization, and it was really just a volunteer group as a part of the conservatory who made this happen, I reached out to them and said, hey, like I'd like to volunteer my time to put together a documentary. I'd always wanted to make a documentary. I made an hour and a half long documentary about a video game the year before. And I just love the documentary process. So I took my M50 and I was like, I'm gonna make this happen. So they agreed. They said, this is a great idea. Um, what do you need from us? I got access to all the city councilors in town. I got access to the mayor. I got access to all the staff, a bunch of people from that volunteer organization. And over the next month, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going for this. I took some money for my savings. I bought a Ronin SC. I bought uh, a Rode NTG4. I bought a 22 millimeter lens for my M50 and I bought some lights and I went for it. Over that next month, 
I had over 100 gigs of high definition interview footage, which is a lot. I had hours and hours of footage um, from interviews that I had done. I recorded so much B-roll. I once went out for five days straight and just recorded B-roll all day and filled up a card. Like, just footage from everywhere in town, went up to people at parks, hey, can I film you for my documentary? Half the time they said no, half the time they said yes. I just tried to make this video as good as I possibly could. I got my friend to come do drone footage for me because I didn't have one at the time. I went all out and made this video. It was over an hour long, had to trim it down to 45 minutes and we released it and it did really, really well. A lot of people saw the work, they recognized that I had made this and long story short, the city felt moved and they decided to allocate $5 million to it and it is being rebuilt as we speak. So that gave me a really good example of a video project that I took on, handled every aspect of and delivered results. Right there, a lot of people in town saw like, okay, Torn can make videos, can he do it for my business? Can he do it for my course? Can he do it for my school? And I got a ton of work offers from there. And slowly but surely, I started making more and more videos and getting more and more recognition, getting more likes on Facebook, more shares, and just eventually, it got to a point where I had a bunch of recurring clients. That's one thing I really focused on. I really tried to combine video and photo stuff with marketing because I had a business degree. And what I did was I organized that into monthly income, like reoccurring streams. So I would have four businesses who would pay me $600 a month, $2,400 a month in total. And I would do X amount of videos, run their social media accounts and take X amount of photos for their business, their website, their magazines, whatever they wanted. So I would do that on top of one-off photo or video jobs. And I guess in September of 2020, at that point, I was making about $4,000 a month, maybe more, maybe 4,500. So I was basically on track to do about 50 grand that year. And maybe I was undercharging, I probably was, but at least where I live, I live in a small town of about 90,000 people and there's not a lot of $10,000 per video jobs just going around. They don't just grow on trees. And if they do, there's a bunch of other companies in town who shoot with like red cinema cameras who have that market. So I was kind of just hustling and trying as hard as I could in order to stay afloat and sustain myself throughout this time. And then once I got to like the beginning, so about the same time, September of 2020, um, I had originally planned to go back to university and do a graduate program in accounting in order to help me get my CPA sooner. The original plan was the Canada Revenue Agency, because I was working there, was going to pay for this for me. So they would pay my tuition, I would go get it, and then I would continue working there afterwards. But since I wasn't an employee, I was unable to do that. So the tuition bill came due, I got gotten accepted into my program, and it was like $7,500 for three and a half months of schooling. And I just kind of sat back and thought to myself like, okay, am I gonna spend this amount of money on that? Or am I gonna invest it in myself, invest it in my business? And I bet you can guess which one I picked. So right then and there, pretty much that same day, I took about, I think it was $700 of it, and I went and I bought Full-Time Filmmaker. And like I said, I'd been watching these videos for a really long time, and I knew the amount of value that was packed into this course, I just was skeptical if it was something that I should buy or not. But I took the plunge and I bought it, and I have to say, if, if you're looking for a sign or you're considering buying this course, it seems like online everybody has a course to buy. At some point, I might even have a course for you to buy. But the amount of value that is packed into this course is absolutely insane. I would pay two grand for this course. And I'm sure at some point people had paid that for this course. I think it was that much a couple years ago. I don't exactly remember. This course gave me a ton of things. So number one, there's enough discounts in it on gear and plugins and programs that you'll make your money back if you just want to do this as a hobby. So that's fine. Number two, the amount of information in this course is just insane. I don't exactly remember who said it, if it was Parker or not, but he said, online you can find a ton of information like that's in this course for free, but you'll spend hours upon hours searching for that one minute of good information when you could have just been in this course and found it immediately. And that is so true. All those hours that you would spend searching through forums and YouTube videos like this one, looking for that one little bit of good information, you could be out there working, making money and practicing filmmaking. So that was really important for me and they're constantly updating this course as well as new gear and new things come out. Number three, the community that you get access to, I can go in the Facebook group at any moment 
and I can ask a question and I'll probably get five to 10 responses. Everybody is out to help everybody and that's a huge plus. I never had a mentor, I never had anybody I could ask questions to and now I do. And I do just wanna state that this course, if you buy it, don't expect like you can just pick up your phone and be like, hey Parker, uh, what setting should I put my microphone at? Like, it's not like that. You can reach out to him with specific questions by email and he will answer you. Like, I'm not saying that won't happen. But if you ask questions to the community, odds are he'll already have answered that question before or someone else will and then they'll have examples and it's just a really great community to be a part of. And the other thing too is, I didn't even have many questions for Parker because he answered all of them. Like there's literally an answer to everything in this course. And I, I honestly, I know they've made a ton of money off this. He's a millionaire, they're mil they have beautiful offices, beautiful gear, but like they have done a huge service and basically put film schools, like colleges, like out of business. I don't know who would spend $40,000 to go to film school when you could just join this one. And everything in here is all that you need. So that being said, I took the plunge, I bought full-time filmmaker, I bought a Mavic Air 2, I bought better equipment, more lenses, more gear, I upgraded to a 1DX Mark II, I bought a Canon 70-200 to Mark III, this was like one of the biggest purchases I'd ever made right before I bought my 1DX2, and I just went for it. So I wanna state again, like I was making with my film business about $5,000 a month, maybe more now, maybe I was getting close to like 6,000 up there, but, one of the things that you need to know is you don't necessarily have to become quote unquote a full-time filmmaker in order to make a living doing this sort of work. And one of the points that I really want to stress that they actually don't mention enough in the course is that there are a ton of places and a ton of people who will hire you based on the skill set that you have, even if you don't have a university degree. If they can look at okay, Torrin, you made this conservatory video, it worked, it's good. I'm sure you could make a video for my charity that will do just as well. Or you can be in charge of marketing for my non-for-profit, or you can work for my city and promote it. Like if you can build a video portfolio and you apply for a job and you have that, and a guy from Harvard with a marketing degree applies, but he has no experience, has no idea how to pick up a camera, he just knows all the theory about marketing, you will get that job. And as the years go on, these types of jobs and these careers are more and more and more in demand. So that leads me to sort of my next path in my career. So I recently got a job working for the Thunder Bay Health Sciences Foundation doing digital engagement. And one of the reasons why I got this job was because of the portfolio that I had. Remember, I have an accounting degree. I don't have a marketing degree. I taught myself. I made my portfolio, I showed that my work would actually deliver tangible results, and I likely got this job over other people with more on paper experience than me. There's always a ton of jobs that require people to have these sort of skills for marketing, and in my town there's plenty, and this is a small town of 90,000 people. I can't even imagine in New York or Los Angeles or bigger cities. And I got offers to many of these jobs, and I kind of got to take my pick of which one I wanted. So what I want to just say to you is that even if you take this course, and you don't like working for yourself, or there's not enough weddings to do where you live, or there's too many filmmakers fighting over that video for that pizza place, go take your skills and your gear and work for someone else full time, or work for another company, because that's an avenue you can absolutely take and do that while you're simultaneously building up your solo practice so in a couple years, you can really take your pick. Like me, for example, I'm working full time for this organization. I do it Monday to Friday, sometimes into the night, sometimes even on the weekends. But I still have time in order to service my monthly reoccurring clients, which I've kept. And I'm actually at the point now where I have to sometimes turn away new business because I have so much going on. This summer, I have like 13 weddings that I'm working. If you can do 13 weddings at $3,000 each, that's $39,000 a year extra on top of your full-time job, because you can do the weddings on the weekend, that you're making. So if you make $60,000 a year, and you make $39,000 a year doing weddings, and you can make $1,000 doing something else, you just made six figures, and you're not even a quote-unquote full-time filmmaker. You're just applying what you've learned to other areas. So what I'm trying to say again is don't think that working for yourself and doing small promotional videos is the end all be all. There's a ton of different areas you can take this experience and these skill sets 
and apply them to. So never ever think that it's a dead end or there's too many filmmakers in your town or it's just too oversaturated. These skills are really important to have. I'm pretty sure every car dealership in every city will need someone to do these sorts of things for them. I'm sure every charity or non-for-profit is looking for someone to do their marketing. I'm sure every business will have to hire someone to do this sort of work at some point. So invest in yourself, add value to other people's lives, and success will follow. Okay, so I know I've been talking now for a long time and that's my whole story, but let's talk more specifically about the course. So I spent $7.99 to get into it. It's on sometimes for $4.99 for Black Friday deals or, or Christmas or special events, but you can join this course for about $7.99 to $500. That is absolutely worth its weight in gold. The videos that they put out are super informative. I've learned so much by watching them. And the nice thing is you can go on Parker's channel and watch snippets of what this course is gonna be and what what to expect and you can really sort of get a good idea for okay this is what this course is gonna be now do I just want to take that next step there's a mini course inside of the course specifically about weddings about real estate about making commercial videos about music videos like every single kind of filmmaking or question you could possibly have there is an answer to it inside this course and like I said before they're constantly updating it so there's always gonna be new information and I don't know how much longer they're gonna constantly update it for I mean they've been really successful off this and at some point there's just not gonna be enough people to buy the course and they're not gonna make as much money doing it, but I firmly believe that there's always gonna be people in this group and in this chat, in this community, that are there to help you learn. So anyways, guys, I'm gonna give this course like 100%, 10 out of 10 stars, like it's terrific. You should totally buy it, even in 2021. It's not a waste of money. You will get your money back even just by applying the discounts that you get. So it's a no brainer and you should totally buy it. But if you have any questions about filmmaking or you're watching this video and you're looking for a sign to maybe do something similar as me and just sort of flip your life upside down, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. So whether you leave them in the comments or you want to call me or text me, just email me and we can chat. I'm all about helping other people do the same thing that I did and that so many other people who are joining full-time filmmaker are doing as well. So I'm just going to say it one more time. If you're looking for a sign and you want to change your life and do this, you absolutely can and it's not too late. I am proof. I'm not being paid by Parker to say this. I have 250 subscribers on YouTube and probably in the life of this video, 100 people will see it. But if one person watches it and listens to what I'm saying and wants to make that plunge, go for it. You can do it and I fully believe in you. But anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Now, if you watch this absurdly long video, please subscribe and leave a like down below. I'd really appreciate it. Every little bit helps at this point. And again, if you have any questions, you can contact me a variety of ways. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.